Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 247 of our trip around the United States. Last night, we pushed our way out of the Navajo Nation and out of Arizona into the northwest corner of New Mexico to bring our day to an end in Farmington. Now, we are getting things started off right in front of the Balanced Rock here in Bloomfield, still in the northwest corner of the state. Our day calls for 360 miles as we make our way out of Bloomfield, back into Farmington, and then south through Blue Water, Milan, and bring our day to an end in Grants. Now of that 360 miles, we already covered a good stretch of that last night, making our way out of the Navajo Nation. So we have that little bit of a lead that we've been maintaining, and we're hoping to keep that today. Although I'm not sure that we're gonna be able to push further than Grants once we get there because it's off into the desert and we don't wanna be stuck out there in the middle of the night. We have a lot of earth caches on the schedule today, although I don't know if we're gonna to get to all of them, and we have a couple of virtuals as well. Each of them promises to be at a pretty cool spot, so hopefully we'll have time to do them. And I know we're gonna see some good stuff because we do every day. So let's see what the northwest corner of New Mexico has in store for us today. Come on, let's go. Our day begins in the city of Bloomfield in the northeast part of San Juan County with a population of about 8,000 people. Bloomfield is a part of the Tri-City area, which includes the county seat, Aztec, and the largest city in the area, Farmington. With its convenient location between highways 550 and 64, the city acts as a gateway to many tourist attractions in the area. A great spot from which to get to many locations, including Quality Waters, the Navajo Lake State Park, and the Salmon Ruins and Heritage Park. It is also a great place to find a wide variety of geocache options. While some are quick and easy grabs, others may leave you in a bit of a thorny situation. But our real reason for pushing east into Bloomfield out of Farmington in the first place was to track down the DeLorme Challenge for the state of New Mexico. This is one logbook that I was very excited to be able to put my stamp on for the upcoming completion of the challenge in just a week or so here. On the outskirts of town, there's also a series of challenge geocaches located in the hills. The premise of each of the challenges is simple. You must simply have found so many caches with the appropriate difficulty rating for that challenge. We drove as close as we could into the hills, but eventually the road got a bit too bumpy and Aichan and I decided to take a walk instead. Despite the fact that it was straight uphill, she seemed more than up for the challenge since she did not get to do a lot of hiking yesterday while we toured the national parks in the Navajo Nation. As soon as we cleared the top of the rise, we immediately spied the prize that we sought, hiding under this rock near the base of a tree. Now that wasn't too difficult, was it Aichan? Taking a look out over the landscape from this viewpoint, it was easy to tell there was a system of trails leading all through the hills around us. Rather than beelining back toward the car, Aichan seemed like she was interested in tracking down just one more find. So we continued down the hills just a little farther and sure enough, there was another challenge waiting for us. By the time we'd finished the ups and down needed to get to just a couple of the caches in this challenge series, I could tell that Aichan was ready to get back in the car and take a nap for the afternoon. That was just as well, because as soon as we pushed our way out of Bloomfield, back through Farmington, it was a long drive south to our next destination. Aichan napped in the back, recovering from our hike up the hills while I battled the winds, making my way further into the desert. Eventually, the flat, barren landscape transitioned into a world filled with spires, kudus, and mushroom rock formations. This was a sure sign that we had entered the Bisti Badlands, a 45,000 acre wilderness area located in San Juan County. The Bisti Wilderness is the largest area of badlands in the San Juan Basin that is easily accessible to the general public. Here you can look forward to exploring the richest fossil beds found in any single sedimentary basin in the world. In some places along this stretch of highway, the wind blew even stronger than it was everywhere else we had been. These spots seem to act like wind tunnels, promoting the formation of sand dunes along the road. Then finally, as we neared our destination cities for the day, the harsh, barren desert landscape began to give way to a rich variety of flora and fauna once again. More importantly to Aichan and I, it also gave way to a rich variety of geocaches for us to discover as well. 
Aware that we were still doing fairly well on time, and knowing that we needed to stop not too far after Grants tonight, we decided to pursue many extra geocaches beyond what was on our target list. This was a very welcome change of pace from yesterday, where we were pursuing virtuals all day long and only ever ended up signing just a couple of logbooks. Now it felt like we were rich in geocaches, with options in each direction that we turned. Aichan liked the flavor of the afternoon as well. Having woken up from her afternoon nap, she was very happy to join me with each one of the hunts we chose to pursue. I think maybe we have time enough for just one more before we need to get the show on the road once again. This one, like the previous find, was particularly appealing because we knew that, being a regular, it had the potential to have a lot of swag inside. And, sure enough, it featured a pretty good offering for potential finders. Our first stop coming back into civilization on a Tri-City hop is the Blue Water Village with a population of right about 600 people. The town was originally founded in 1880 as a stop on the a and Railroad. Mormon settlers built a dam nearby and established a community named Mormontown. Eventually though, the importance of the railroad faded and Mormontown was renamed as Blue Water. Just a couple of miles down the road, we slide into Milan, which is a little bit bigger with about 3,200 residents. Like a lot of other small towns, the murals can help begin to paint a picture of life in the area. From indigenous settlements to the impact of Route 66 and the uranium mining boom, Milan has seen its share of pivotal events throughout history. We appreciated that these murals hinted at the acceptance of visitors from not only around the world, but visitors from around other worlds as well. Finally reaching the end of our Tri-City Hop, we find our way into Grants with a population of over 9,000 people and the county seat of Cibola County. Grants began as nothing more than a railroad camp in the 1880s when three Canadian brothers were awarded a contract to build a section of the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad through the region. Railroad logging remained popular for the town until the 1930s when the industry began to decline. It shifted industries to become an agricultural force, gaining notoriety as the carrot capital of the United States for a short while. From Grant's camp to Grant's station, and finally, just Grant's, this city has always remembered its roots. And those roots connect closely to the New Mexico Mining Museum found in the downtown area. Here you can learn about New Mexico's rich history in mining. It showcases a variety of exhibits and displays that provide insight into the lives of the miners who worked in the area around Grants. The one commonality we noticed between all three of these towns was the native basket array. John Badal, former president of the one-time technology giant Quest, had a large number of obsolete satellite dishes on his hands and nothing to do with them. He hatched an idea for an art installation in the area by enlarging copies of native basket designs, printing them onto vinyl, and then putting that vinyl onto old satellite dishes. And some of these dishes feature authentic historical native basket designs, including two from the collection at the Maxwell Museum of Anthropology in Albuquerque. A Navajo wedding basket that symbolizes a person's lifeway and an Apache star. Learning that we can bed down at the Joe Skeen Campground, free of charge, we decide to push just a little further to reach the El Mapais National Monument. El Mapais takes its name from the Spanish word meaning badlands due to the extremely barren and dramatic volcanic field that covers much of the park's surface area. It is distinguished by its unique geological features, including lava flows and lava tubes that provide critical roosting habitats for a variety of bats. The underground structure of the tubes provides stable temperatures, protection, and proximity to very limited water sources, making them great environments for the bats to live. To finish things up, we wanted to have a look at some of these lava tubes for ourselves, so we decided to hike out on the Zuni Okoma Trail. In its entirety, the trail runs for about seven and a half miles from Highway 53 to Highway 117, but we did not take that long of a route. We hiked about half a mile in from the road to reach an ancient trail across the rugged lava flows. And when I say this trail is ancient, I mean ancient. It has been used by both the Zuni and Acoma people to connect with each other for over a thousand years and still continues to be used to this day. 
As we hiked across the lava flows under the fading light of the setting sun, we tried to imagine ourselves in the place of these peoples living in this harsh, rugged environment. All right, travelers, it looks like that is going to do it for our day. We began things off in Bloomfield for the top northwest corner of New Mexico. From there, we made our way back into Farmington and then began to drop south for the day. It was mostly empty desert on that long stretch with very little in it until we made it to Blue Water, right off Route 66, a forgotten little town that had the highway touched a little better, might have performed better, but it's a ghost town now. However, making our way slightly down the road to Milan and Grants, both of those towns are doing much better and offered us a historic tour through the town as we got to see the mining operations that turned it into what it is today. We're finishing things off here at the El Mai Pais National Monument and the wind has been whipping like crazy the entire time we've been here. It is still doing so right now. We were able to escape it by hunkering down low in a lava tube and it's just passing over the top of our heads. But if I were to stand up right now, good chance I'd probably lose my hat. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.